Hello, today we're going to talk about how to set up the Visual Studio Remote Containers extension. So to start out, I have a directory here under D GitHub called Go Files. And this directory only has two files in it. It's a hello go.go, which is a hello world in Golang. And the other one's a Docker file that we'll get more into in just a moment. So let's try and run our hello world Golang example. You see, Go isn't actually installed on this device. If I try and run a Go version, my computer here doesn't know what I'm trying to do because it's not installed. So let's switch over to the Docker file instead. And from line one, you see it's built from the latest Golang Docker container in Docker Hub. And then I'm doing a few other things from lines three through eight, like setting up a user and a Go root and Go path, as well as doing some updates and installing some things like Z shell, wget, git, sudo, and vim. And then on lines 12 through 14, I'm adding a new user for this container, which is a little bit weird for an application container, but not so weird considering we're going to be running our program inside of the container and doing all the development in the container itself. So next, I'm going to hit F1 on my keyboard or Control shift p Alternatively, I can go up to View and run Command Palette. And then I'll search here for remote containers. And there's an option here to open the folder in a container. Let's click on that. And I'll choose the Go Files folder. Now I have a few options here. I can pick from a predefined container. And these are pre-built containers that have things like Python or Golang or any number of different languages pre-installed. I'm going to actually pick from Dockerfile because I've got one here in my current directory. And you see the window has reopened, and if you look in the bottom left corner, it says I'm in a dev container using existing Dockerfile. And the prompt looks a little bit different too. That's because if you'll recall from the Dockerfile I have on line 10, I'm installing Z shell. So let's try and see what's in the directory now. I have the Docker file and hello go, which are the same files I have on my left navigation panel. Let's try and run our hello go.go example now. So see that worked just fine. We have one more thing that's new in the directory as well, and that's the .dev container folder with a .dev container.json file there. And if you click on that, you'll see that this is a JSON file with the Visual Studio remote container extensions, telling it which Docker file to use and giving it some shell settings too. Let's close out of this window and try this again in a pre-built container. So I'm back now. I closed out of that dev container window and opened a new one from the Windows operating system. And this one, if you look at the bottom left corner, doesn't have any remote extensions present but I still have the dev container folder here. So if I run that again, open folder and container using the remote containers extension, it's going to default to using the dev container. So let's remove that. And then I'm gonna use a predefined container definition this time. You see, I've got Alpine, I've got Go, and I've got Helm, and I've got a few more that I can use here for any language I could possibly want. Let's stick to Go because we are running a Golang application. And you see the prompt is still here. I still have the ability to run my Golang hello world, but the dev container folder looks a little bit different. I've got devcontainer.json, but I've also got another Docker file, which if we open it up is a little bit more specific of a Docker file. It's not really more specific, it's just that I didn't build this one. Visual Studio Code and Microsoft built it for me and then gave it to me for me to use. That's it for this demo. Thank you for watching.